uh, how's it all been so far with the Flames? It's been great. I think uh, we've done like 18 shows and we have about 15 more left. Um, and every place has been huge like this and packed and a lot of sold out shows, uh, great crowds, just all across the board. It's been awesome. Cool. Um, so who are the bands and like guitarists that got you into playing like hard rock, heavy metal? Um, let's see. Uh, the first, well, Nirvana, uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit was the first video that I saw when I was uh, like eight, nine, or ten or something like that, and um, it just blew my mind, and I was like, I want to make loud noise like that, you know, and um, so that was the first first band, um, more on the heavy rock side, and then, you know, I heard a band like Deftones and uh, Lower Tunings and, you know, that kind of was a, a, you know, more transitional from from Nirvana, Deftones, and then got into a lot of like Swedish metal uh, bands like At the Gates and Flames, obviously, and uh, bands like Hymns, uh, um, Living Sacrifice, Zayo, uh, bands like that. So yeah, that's kind of how a lot of um, influence growing up. Cool. Any sort of particular guitarists that stand out to mind? Um, uh, man, it's, it's always constantly changing. When I took lessons a lot, like, uh, my teacher always taught me a lot of Led Zeppelin, too. So a lot of Jimmy Page, you know, just like the riff master, just overall, just always doing different things, making different sounds with the guitar. Um, so I'd say Jimmy Page is one of the first, and then a lot of Jimi Hendrix, um, David Gilmore is my favorite guitar player. Um, so, yeah, guys like that. Cool. Um, so, uh, tell us about the new record and how it came together. Because obviously like, it's more of a, what's that, a hard rock sound compared to As Are They Dying. Yeah, we definitely wanted to incorporate a lot more of that heavy hard rock. Um, just because for, you know, for so long we were doing a lot of you know, the same, uh, you know, just more aggressive stuff. And uh, you know, with our new singer who sings, it just made more sense uh, that uh, the vocals and the instruments should be cohesive together, mm -hmm. and kind of the pace and kind of the pulse of the music should you know work together and not work against each other. So that was just kind of the natural, like yeah, let's do this and um, do something that's more endemic, something that's bigger sounding, and um, yeah, that was kind of. The focus, I guess, for this. And was it difficult, like transitioning, like riff wise, or was it sort of just slow it down a little bit, maybe? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you can write a melody on like a piano or something, or on acoustic guitar, and then you're like, wait, if I speed that up, that could be like really metal. But if you know, if you don't speed it up as much, then it can be in like more of a hard rock sort of. It's kind of where you want the like energy to be at. So you know, obviously, metal's all about speed. And hard rock's more like about chilling, you know, so yeah. it's kind of, that's where we wanted to kind of be in riffs, everything was um, kind of the same old, just as long as it's a good melody, it's a, um, a work, a, a good part that works within the song structure. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, so how did Shane come into the band? Was there like any other choices at the time, or just auditions, or just not even sort of concentrating on that? Yeah, guys were hitting us up. Uh, for a while, Shane came into the picture a lot later, after, you know, the, while we were looking for singers, or just putting the word out there, and, you know, like I said, guys were hitting us up, and then um, uh, Nick and Shane were friends from back in their teenage years, they played in a band together, so, but uh, Shane played guitar back then, and then throughout the years he's been doing a lot more clean singing in his, uh, his previous band, O oh Sleeper. And it was like, hey, would you want to like sing like a lot, like be the singer of the band? And he was totally interested, and that's kind of how it happened. And from the then on, um, you know, we just scrapped. We didn't do tryouts or anything. I guess he was the only one. It was we had a song in mind that we uh, it was the song All Rise uh, that we were like, see what you can do over this. And then as soon as he got back. It's pretty much what you hear on the album, and it's, it just kind of all blew our minds. Like this is, this is refreshing for all of us, and it's um, this is a good like foundation for writing the rest of the record. Mm -hmm.
Okay, next one. Um, how was the summer tour with uh, Black Label Society and how was Reading? Because Reading's not really a, yeah. a rock festival, hard rock festival. So yeah. Cool. Well, Black Label, I mean, it's it's intimidating when you got a guy like Zach Wilde, obviously, around the corner. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're warming up in your dressing room and, or you hear him warming up in the dressing room. Like, God, he's just, he's such an incredible guitar player and um, he's also such an incredible, like, person and like just presence he's super positive upbeat all the time and just wants to hang out shoot the shit um and um you know it's a little intimidating with his sort of crowd a lot older uh, we did oz our previous band did oz fest in 2005 with black label society so we knew what mm -hmm. that crowd was like and so for kind of us to come up there it was different but you know when you see a couple here and there that are like they get it you're like yeah. okay cool like you know it, it's working um, and then doing Reading, was doing we do Reading first or second? I was Reading Leeds. Reading Leeds, yeah. Um, they were fine. It's, it was, you know, obviously our first time in the UK with this new band, so, um, but, um, I think the people who were there enjoyed it and, you know, playing a festival like Reading and Leeds, um, wasn't something we our previous bands ever did before mm. so it was like no way we're getting this opportunity like first right like right off the bat like that was pretty incredible so hopefully we build from there and yeah you know. i think having shane like the vocal style of shane kind of then it's a little bit more to like be more open to people rather than they, like tim was more just you know, straight yeah up. it's it's more niche sort of i mean metal it's not like niche but in, in terms of mainstream yeah, yeah it's like you know when you, once you have clean vocals you know there's um you know like any yeah, i don't know like someone who who wasn't into metal could hear it and be like oh i want to go mm -hmm. check this out and like oh lo and behold like maybe they like metal now you know it's kind of like but as a dying lot of kids would tell us like you know you were my first metal band uh, and then now they, you know, they've been metal for years and stuff. So maybe, you know, this it's kind of maybe bridged the gap from mainstream to like, uh, you know, still metal in a sense, but that hard rock element that yeah. is there as well. Um, would there have been a surprise in the set list tonight? Maybe some like as I die and stuff, yeah. or um, any sort of cool covers I could imagine. Shane, could... covers would be awesome, but for the for this first tour, um, sticking straight, stick with, straight with it, and then uh, maybe once we come back with the headliner, we, we we keep throwing around a bunch of cover ideas that we want to do, and uh, we can all, we've also been exploring a lot of acoustic uh, uh, renditions of our songs. So there's like we're not really limited with. Mm. much uh, now so I think next time that would that'd be fun to do but yeah we we aren't looking back and, and playing any uh, of our older material that's cool um, so you already asked like what are the specific goals with Woven War? you know just kind of get things back on track in you know in a, a career sense you know we were doing something for so long and then you know just all kind of went to shit and, you know just like <laughs> Okay, well, what, I, you know, what am I good at? Oh, I'm good at making music, being in a band. So let's keep doing that. So it's you know, it's going to take time to rebuild and just, you know, just grow this into you know fans like just that have identified us with something for so long, and then they get hit with this tragic news, and it's just you know we want to move away from that and mm -hmm. just kind of. Um, you know, hopefully get new fans on board, get as many old fans as, as on board as well. Um, but yeah, we, we, we've got, we're gonna do probably two years touring off this album and then uh, we've got a three album deal. So we'll be doing, getting back in the studio probably either late next year, or early 2015 and just and just keep going, you know, kind of, um, you know, we're fortunate enough to have a lot of our friends uh, in, the heavy music scene and stuff, um, like in Flames, taking us out is an amazing opportunity. And so, um, hopefully, the more opportunities like that come up, mm -hmm. and you can just keep, keep going. Okay. Uh, next question was going to be, what are the plans after in Flames? After in Flames, we're going to go back. Uh, we have nothing the rest of the year. Um, probably do a little bit of writing here and there, and then um, in early next year, we'll be doing uh, four or five. Four, I think a month-long tour in the States. I can't say who it is with, with yet, but it's uh, 
I think that would be a great tour over here as well. But um, um, we'll be doing that, and then uh, festivals next summer, and just kind of whatever opportunities come up. But we're looking to stay pretty busy. Cool. Um, as it's Halloween season, um, what five Halloween films would you recommend? Five Halloween films. Um, so you guys seem to like knock it out of the ballpark when it comes to Halloween compared to us. So like, yeah. Oh Halloween. yeah, yeah. I know. Like, we were always in Europe when Halloween happens, and uh, or in the UK, and it's like not as. Like, oh. uh, I say Rob Zombie. Movies, obviously. Uh, House of a Thousand Corpses is one of the Good most choice. fucked up movies. Um, and Devil's Rejects, uh, more screwed up. Um, see, I, don't, I don't watch scary movies as much because my wife doesn't watch them. Mm -hmm. But um, Scream, I would say, would be, would be one, you know. Um, How about three? I'll give you three. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, and finally, is there anything you'd like to say to the UK fans coming tonight and like the, where they can find out about Woking War? Yeah, um, no, I'm just excited to be back. Uh, you know, uh, uh, anyone who's picked up the album, like, thank you. And, uh, you know, we'll be busy. We'll, we're going to keep, you know, kicking ass and uh, WovenWar.com, Facebook. Uh, Woven War, Instagram, at Woven War, Twitter, at Woven War, all that stuff. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we're going to be pretty active, so you uh, can find out about stuff like that. We might be doing a new video sometime soon. Um, so, just kind of figuring out the next step. Uh, you know, this is a long tour, six weeks, uh, so it's kind of consuming all of our time for now. But there's no other place we'd rather be than tour in a place like this, you mm -hmm. know, and just great crowds, so, yeah. Cool, thanks much, Phil. Yeah, of course, thanks. No, so Hobbit's signing out.